Thanks. Um, so, thank you, Steve. I've been a long admirer of these events, uh, the show-off events. I think they're really unique and fun. And I actually worked with Steve earlier this year Woo! to, because uh, I produce events and festivals and things, and I, I hired Steve earlier this year to uh, do some events about the future. It's a very similar format, but people talking about the future. Uh, but tonight, I'm going to talk about the past, specifically my past, and something that's very dear to me. So in order to do that, can you guys, everyone see the screen okay? I have a sightline paranoia. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about the past, something that's very dear to me, but let me set the stage for you. So 1993 seems like a long time ago. So I'm going to remind, remind you about some important things that happened in 1993, and then I'll get into important things to me. Um, so uh, human cloning. Human cloning first happened in 1993. Uh, very similar to human cloning, very similar subject matter. The most highest grossing film was Jurassic Park. Still an amazing film, right? Uh, speaking of big, scary monsters, this guy, Meatloaf, <laughs> had the biggest song in the UK and the US, I Would Do Anything For Love. You remember that song? It's terrible, right? You love that song, I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, funnily enough, I actually saw Meatloaf in concert on that tour. I was 10 years old. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. Uh, that's a whole nother geek show up. So, uh, an album that was really important to me that was released in 1993, I was really into grunge music. And Nirvana's In Utero, still an album I love dearly. It was released in 1993, the pinnacle of grunge. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. Um, politics, the EU was created, was started in 1993. Uh, May Major, John Major was the prime minister. Bill Clinton was the US president. Now in Canada, where I'm from, there was a remarkable three prime ministers in 1993. I have no idea why there were three prime ministers. That's Brian Mulroney. Um, that's Kim Campbell, who was the first and only female prime minister for four months. That's why her photo's a bit smaller. And then there's John Chrétien. John Chrétien is an amazing prime minister in Canada. I have no idea why that happened. I was too young to understand. And then there's me, age 10, 10 years old. Uh, so imagine me, obviously less facial hair. I was doing a lot of acting and singing in community theater, uh, playing a lot of sports. Uh, and then this thing came along, this amazing thing came along on the Fox TV network. Um, and it changed my life, and I'm going to argue that it changed TV and it changed lots of things. I'm going to do a really cheeky slide switch right now to show you what it is. Oh, hold on. Oh no, what I do? Shit. The resolution's changing. Oh, you did presenter mode. I didn't know that. There we go. Slightly anticlimactic. Build up. Yes, there we go. You remember, yes? Geeks, geeks, you're with me. You already, I, don't, I don't even need to show you this. It's just nostalgia. Yeah. These are the production values of 1993, everybody. Remember those things, the science music? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so you get it. It's paranormal activity, spooky things. Okay, we got it, we got it. Okay. So, where were we? So, um, yes, The X-Files. 1993 premiered, a uh, show by a guy named Chris Carter. An amazing watershed moment in TV and in my life as well. Uh, it was the premise, as I'm sure you all know, but I'll just tell you anyway in case you weren't, aren't aware, uh, was about two FBI agents who are uh, tasked with looking at the, the kind of reject cases, or the cases that couldn't be solved by the normal FBI, or the normal FBI didn't even want to touch. Okay, and it's starring the, this actor, uh, David Duchovny. Yeah, he's a hunky guy, right? Uh, 32 years old, David Duchovny, as special agent Fox Mulder. Uh, his counterpart... The beautiful uh, Gillian Anderson, who's portraying special agent and medical doctor, and this will come up later, this is important, medical doctor Dana Scully. Now, um, this is incredibly important because she's a total babe. This is uh, from the very first episode, as you can see, Gillian Anderson playing Dana Scully, total babe. But we're going to come back to that again later. Um, so, that opening sequence I showed you, if you're familiar with the show, you know that they always ended on this tagline. This, this climactic tagline, and it was almost always, the truth is out there. Now, for me, as a 10-year-old kid, this was a huge deal. This is a huge revelation for me. So, uh, so I grew up in a very religious household, and I was taught, ever since I was born, uh, that there was this book that had all the truth in it. We had to study it at school, we had to study it on Sundays, and it was the, that was the truth. This big, thick book of fables, that was the truth. The truth was not out there, the truth was in there, and in the, in the teachings of my parents and, and religious figures and teachers. So for me, as a 10-year-old kid, to see a show that was like about the unknown and about the mysteries of the world and that the truth was out there, this was a total revelation. This was really important to me as a kid. Um, and I was a curious kid. I was a little bit rebellious. Um, I loved asking questions. I loved challenging authority. Uh, I was a, a bit of a brat, let's be honest. And my career aspirations at this point were to be an archaeologist <laughs> and to be an astronaut. 
Okay, so this, this is uh, it's all coming full circle. Um, so clearly I was very influenced by TV and film. That was my escape from the very restrictive, uh, religious, some would say ridiculous, uh, upbringing. Um, so that, this was my escape, film and TV. And not to overstate the point, but it was incredibly important for me to see this show and to see that there was a truth that was beyond you know, the town I lived in and the religion I was raised in. So this is very important. Um, and Mulder and Scully, our two main characters, they have dif differing viewpoints. So again, you're probably familiar with the show, but Mulder is the believer. He believes in aliens. He believes in the sort of truth that, that out there that he's, uh, he's sort of endlessly trying to find. And then there's Dana Scully, who's the medical doctor, who's the skeptic who always kind of butts heads with him all the time. And it's an amazing dynamic that they had because they're constantly butting heads, but they're in search of the same truth. And that's really interesting. And again, the truth is out there, and they're always trying to find it. Every week, there, there are different stories are beaming into my 10-year-old brain um, about these two characters and their diver divergent viewpoints, but they're working together to solve something. So as you can see, that's an alien there. Uh, as I'm sure you've already surmised by the opening sequence, it's about aliens. They have a lot of abductions and strange occurrences, mostly happening in America. Um, this is the fluke man, so there's many monsters. Kind of monster of the week is a, is a current thing that happens. Uh, this is the fluke man. He's a mutant that lives in the sewers of New Jersey. Very spooky and scary. Um, but actually, in the show, the scariest people are the humans. So they have these monsters and aliens that can't necessarily be explained, but the humans are far scarier. So in this particular episode, it's called Home. It's actually the scariest episode, of, uh, so many people think. Um, it was about an inbred family in the American South, a severely disfigured inbred family. And this show was, uh, this episode was actually banned, so it was only shown once uh, in its original air date, and then it was banned. It was never shown again. You can get it on DVD, but you can never see it in, in repeats. Um, and these are, these are human people, and that's what was scary. This guy right here, uh, government conspiracies are a huge, huge uh, through line in the show. And this guy, this guy doesn't even have a name. He's the chief bad guy. We call him the cigarette smoking man. He's always smoking. He doesn't even have a name. He's such a bad, shadowy figure. He's part of this government syndicate that's constantly trying to derail Mulder and Scully's search for the truth. Um, and where was I? And uh, the show was never, was not afraid to make fun of itself. That's a really amazing thing. So despite all of the dark themes and the mysteries and the aliens and monsters, the show routinely had episodes that were poking fun at itself, self-referential, often referencing how Mulder and Scully were kind of two ridiculous characters because they saw all these crazy things happen and Scully still refused to believe and Mulder still just believed and they went on these elaborate quests to find you know, the truth that they were seeking. So I really loved that that was uh, a key feature of the show. It wasn't that serious, it was quite fun. One of my favorite moments in the entire series, uh, the series ran for nine years, 1993 to 2002, uh, one of my favorite moments in the entire series is this episode here. It's called Three of a Kind, um, where, without getting into it, Scully is, uh, is, lets her guard down, and she be doesn't become such a tough uh, skeptic. And, of course, all the men around her, this amazing scene right here, you can't really tell, but these men just throw themselves at her. They're completely in love with her. And for me as a kid, that's how I felt too. I was in love with Scully too. Holy shit, look at this. She's a, she's a total babe. Um, by the way, I was searching this on YouTube, and I thought it was really weird that this photo was signed because that meant that either she had the photo, because remember back in the day, act actors and actresses, you would write to them and they would sign the photo and email it to you. Either she had this photo and was signing it and giving to people, which I doubt, or someone like went to a Comic-Con or a conference <laughs> with that photo and he asked her to sign it. And I think that'd be really weird, kind of creepy. But anyway, she did apparently, unless it's for So anyway, this is her beautiful woman. Um, and she's still acting, she's still active. And this is a photo of her at age 47. And I would argue she's even more beautiful um, than she was then. And she's an incredible actress. I just saw her in A Streetcar Named Desire earlier this year uh, at the Young Vic, and it was amazing. Um, but actually, more importantly than her being a babe, because it's nice to talk about babes, but uh, more importantly than that, um, she actually taught me that I should admire strong, intelligent, opinionated women, and I very much do. Um, and that's what Scully, who really is the main character, even though David Duchovny is sort of the star, at least initially, she is really the main character. Um, and I'm just going to wrap up here by saying that uh, there was a, a, a thing that I learned by doing this. So thank you to Steve. He made me realize something I didn't know. And that was that the, the X-Files ran for nine seasons, like I said, 2002, and the first five were filmed in Vancouver, so in Canada. So uh, even though it was set in the U.S., the first five series, first five uh, seasons were filmed in Vancouver, and this was very public knowledge and a big thing for Canada, I guess. Um, and I knew that Vancouver was this really interesting, kind of mythical, magical place, but I'd never been. I lived on the other side of Canada, and my Vancouver friends are laughing at me. Um, but it turns out that in 2002, just as the X-Files was wrapping up, 
I moved to Vancouver. This place. No, oh, that's not Vancouver. That's Mulder and Scully questioning each other. Uh, I moved to this place, Vancouver. Uh, and that was actually a revelation I just realized, that even though I didn't move for the X-Files, I, I probably was influenced to kind of take a risk and to search for something new and search for a truth, and my own truth. And part of that was me moving across the country uh, to Vancouver, this beautiful place. Anyway, that is it for me. I've overrun. I will say that I'm sure you're all aware, but the show is uh, coming back for a six-episode uh, little mini-series in January. So I do encourage you to watch. I have no idea if it'll be any good, but the show did change my life, and maybe it, your, it will yours too. Truth is out there. Thank you.